Hi, I'm Daisy, and I'm really nervous. Um, and I'm going to do something really crazy, and I'm going to talk about something really boring. Um, law and rights, which are like fundamental to people who have mental health involvement, diagnoses, working, receiving services, and even the Department of Health, and boring people like that. So I studied law at university, and I had a mental illness halfway through, and I went back and completed it. And then I specialized in human rights. I specialized a bit in medical law. I digested the Richard Jones Mental Health Act manual, and I found a little loophole in it, a little lacuna, where it's going wrong. And it might be the ramblings of an isolated mad woman, and I'm very nervous, I'm talking off my head, but this is where I think it goes wrong. Human rights came into domestic law in 1998 under the Human Rights Act. That was when the government actually has to buck up and basically give the individuals the right, their uh, vertical, so they're from the state and its state functions for the individual, not between individuals, just the state and the state functions. So the Mental Health Act is an instrument of the state. That predates the Human Rights Act because the Mental Health Act came in in 1983. They did a sneaky little amendment in 2007, but they should have overhauled the whole Act of Parliament because medicine has come a long way since 1983. The only thing they really did was brought in um, advocacy as an enshrined right. So the moral of the story is, they call it constructive tension, where two acts of parliament don't add up. The problem they've got, human rights are enshrined. This basically means all laws are equal, but some are more equal than others. All laws are equal, but they all have to be read in alignment with human rights, because human rights at the top, they trump all other laws. And the Mental Health Act, as we know, is not really constructively in tension, it's flouting people's human rights. The one I want to leave you with, and I'm guessing my time, I'm rushing, is um, Article 9 of the Human Rights Act, which is an absolute right, is never allowed to be broken by the state, it's not qualified for the protection of health and morals, capitalism, you know, nothing like that, they're never allowed to break it, listen to this. Freedom, thought, conscience and religion, and it's never been challenged.